I'm Steve Ryder, producer of the Breakpoint Podcast. It isn't politically correct to say so, but reality is what it is. Boys and girls are different. Physiologically, psychologically, emotionally, they learn differently and have different emotions. And in these days, in a world that is increasingly designed for girls, boys are suffering in education, socially, and especially in maturity. Today on the Breakpoint Podcast, Warren Cole Smith interviews Mark Hancock, founder of Trail Life USA, a Christian organization whose mission it is to guide generations of courageous young men to honor God, lead with integrity, serve others, and experience outdoor adventure. Here are Warren Cole Smith and Mark Hancock. Mark, welcome back to the program. A couple of years ago, I was down with you in South Carolina, and we got to tour the Trail Life headquarters, and it was just really exciting to uh, then to see that development. And now here we are at National Religious Broadcasters, and Trail Life has really grown. And before we get into some of the other maybe bigger cultural issues that I wanted to talk about, just give me an update on Trail Life. How are y'all doing? Well, it's, it's going great. In the last couple of years, we've seen significant growth. Every year, we're seeing about 10 to 12% growth in terms of membership. But what's even bigger than that, that is the depth of the impact that we're able to have on boys now. You know, we're in 49 states, we're in over 800 churches, 28,000 members, but you, you have to look at the stories that we're hearing and because now the troops have a little bit of maturity around them, you know, where they've identified their leaders and they got some experience, the depth of the work that's being done in young men's hearts and in the fathers who are in the program and the men who are in the program is just it, it's just phenomenal what it is that we're we're seeing from the field. So it's very it's very rewarding to watch it, it grow and, and get deeper. Well, I bet it is. Um, you know, you and I were both active in the Boy Scouting movement for years, and uh, you know, sometimes I imagine um, when people ask me about Trail Life, you know, should I? You know, Trail Life's a new organization. You know, especially at former scouters, they would say, you know, Trail Life is a new organization. Should I really get involved? And I always say to them, imagine it was a hundred years ago and you had the opportunity to be in on the ground floor Mm. of the scouting movement Mm -hmm. and they're like oh yeah you know and to me that's what's exciting about trail life is is that you guys are starting this this amazing national movement that is distinctively christian and it's the lord's blessing it and the opportunity to be involved in that must be pretty darn exciting to be one of the founders well it's legacy kind of work and any man who is starting a troop out of his church is starting something that for generations will be there. It's not just the, the legacy of the national program. Any man who is engaged and wants to see boys grow, he can start a troop in his church, get a couple of uh, adult leaders together, and they are changing generations. And long after they move or they go on to heaven or whatever it is, that troop, could, that ministry that they start could continue to produce a cha- great change in, in boys' lives. Well, I know, Mark, that the narrative of trail life is much bigger, much greater than the relationship that many of the members originally had with the scouts. The scout, the Boy Scouts had made some changes that were moving it in a direction away from Christian ideals, and you and other men and women got together to found Trail Life USA so you could stand firmly on biblical ideas. And like I say, I know that's only a part of your narrative, and you don't want to focus on being against something, but rather on standing for something. Something. But I do think it's important to mention that context to say that if it's possible, things in our culture, things in youth ministry, youth work have only gotten worse in the last few years. There is almost a bona fide war on boys going on right now in yeah. this country. Yeah, it's, it seems, or at least a war on boyhood itself. It seems like boyhood is some sort of social disease that we're trying to eradicate. And all the systems now of our culture are really geared uh, for girls or, or probably even more accurate than that, geared for neither boys or girls. And we just think that Trail Off USA, because we're, we're Christ-centered, and that's that's a significant difference from Boy Scouts of America, and we're also unapologetically boy-focused, because we believe that boys and girls are different. And I know that's politically incorrect to say, and it's not very popular. You, I'm not going to get any statues built for me you know, because I say things like that. But boys and girls are different. And and, and with society running in, in the direction opposite of, of that, to take away the significance of being a boy and the significance of being a girl and the incredible strengths and 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 plans and skills and, and abilities that boys and girls separately have. To take that away from them, we think, is a sad thing. So you're right. And in, in every day, it seems to get get uh, worse and worse. Well, if we could summarize that sort of pathology in, in our culture as the war against boyhood, you're, part of your solution for that is Trail Life USA, of course, but, but the idea of just letting boys be boys, but letting boys be boys in the context of, of Christian 
leadership and Christian mentorship. Mm -hmm. And you've written a a booklet about that idea of letting boys be boys, and you've identified a few strategies to help bring that about. Can you say a little more about that? Sure. It's called Let Boys Be Boys, and and I actually wrote this for our troop leaders, and then I realized that it really speaks to a larger audience than that, because there are are men and women who are leading groups of boys, maybe their Sunday school class or some sort of community program or something like that, and that these these same ideas, because they are our core to who we are as as humans, uh, will really function in any organization. So I wrote the book in order to speak to people who are leaders of boys. And so the subtopic is is three winning strategy for leaders of boys. And uh, so we lay out those strategies from 30,000 foot level, and then we get down to the nitty gritty and says, here's what you can actually do to make it make a difference in a boy's life. Well, uh, we don't, obviously, if people want to know, they can read the book, but uh, <laughs> just, uh, can you give us some headlines? What are those three strategies? Sure. Well, the first thing is we need to embrace the scientific evidence of physical and psychological differences in boys and girls. You know, like I said, it's politically incorrect to say that, but there are actual physical and biological differences between boys and girls that go beyond just the obvious. You know, the, the way that their eyes are constructed. Boys and girls' eyes are, are constructed different so that boys are more sensitive to motion and, and at a distance. And girls are more sensitive to things up close. And so you put a boy in a classroom and you put a sheet, a worksheet in front of him as a young boy and you tell him we're going we're to color now. I mean, you might as well just be beating him with a stick. He just doesn't want to do it. He isn't wired for that. So that begins to look like a boy who has an educational problem. And boys are two times more likely to uh, be put into special education, three times more likely to be declared ADHD. And some of it is because these 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 physical differences in boys and girls. Another one is the way that they hear. Girls, young girls can hear 10 times better than young boys. And so if you've got a soft-spoken teacher and you're in a classroom uh, and that that boy can't stay focused because he isn't catching every word, well, he looks a lot like a kid with ADHD because he just isn't, he's not engaged with what's going on there. He looks uninterested or he's going to get into trouble just because of that physical difference because we're not addressing that. We're pretending like there isn't a difference there. Well, you know, Mark, it's interesting um, that uh, we have to tell people that reality matters. Yeah. That's, uh, it's really, but because that's in essence what you're saying, right? Is that this is not an ideological or, or a political or a religious idea. You're just talking about physics and chemistry, and this is reality. It's not a social construct. You don't teach boys to have a different eye structure than the girls. You don't teach boys to, to hear different than the girls. The brain structures, you know how we talk about the left brain and right brain? Well, that's really only true for boys. You know, girls girls can, can function left and right brains at the same time. So if you're teaching a math class, which is pretty much a logical skill, uh, girls can make connections left brain to right brain to add life to that to that teaching, where boys are really, really kind of restricted in that area. And, and this is just science. This isn't a social construct. It isn't something that, you know, because a boy was born with certain parts that as a parent, we decided we we're going, he was going to have that kind of brain. So he this was born that way. So that's number one. What's number two? Number two is boys really need risk and competition. And this is part of our design. When you look at the things that made our society great, you can point back to men who are winning men who took chances to head across an ocean or took chances to go to the moon or found a country, you know, or, or fight for their freedom or whatever. That comes out of risk and competition. We're taking it out of our society, you know, especially for boys. You know, recess, we're taking things like tag away or those kind of things because actually this quotes uh, educators saying that that tag it affects their self-esteem if they get tagged a lot and so so we're taking that out to, to remove any risk and competition from them you know the whole participation trophy thing we talk about right yeah well we're producing a whole generation of what i call unproductive narcissists they're unproductive because we haven't really expected anything of them and they're narcissists because we haven't allowed them to fail so these boys have these these dreams where i am going to be the next mark zuckerberg or i'm going to be the next bill gates or i'm going to invent something or i read about some guy in the internet and they just they have these kind of fantasies because they haven't failed and and so there's this whole failure, failure to launch where we have more young men living at home than since the census began counting that in 1960 because men are they, they don't know how to deal with failure because they haven't been they haven't been taught that hey sometimes the other team is going to win so you put a boy in a court you put a boy in a competition you put a boy in a in a in a, in a classroom and you take away those elements of risk and you say everyone's going to get a trophy well the boy's like really. <laughs> 
you know, I can work really hard and I'm going to get the same thing everybody else does. So what happens is we drive them to that inside world where they can progress, where they can win, where they get uh, points and levels and gain things and that's the video game world yeah so they 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 intuitively know that they've got to go somewhere to get better at something and to win and compete so we drive them to video games and then we criticize them for playing so many video games so boys can't even win for winning so they, they just they just seem to lose across the whole thing boys are looking primarily for three things three questions that you want to be able to answer one is who's with me Who's in charge and what's our mission? And if when we're in front of boys, if we're not answering those three questions clearly, who's with me? Who's in charge? They need to know who's in charge. You have a substitute teacher walk into a classroom. The boys are going to challenge that, you know, more so than girls. Girls have a tendency to accept I'm your substitute teacher. Oh, I understand. I'll do what you say. Boys need something more than that. They need for that person relationally to make that connection and Mm -hmm. earn that right to be in charge. And then the third thing, what's our mission? Well, who does a really good job at answering those three questions is gangs. And if we could learn from gangs what it is that they do, they clearly identify who's with me. You know, they dress them up a certain way. They, they, know, they know who they are. They know what they're a part of. They have a name. They have something that they stand for. Who's in charge? Very clear hierarchical order. And what's our mission? They always know what the mission is. And that's extremely attractive for young men. That's why they're so successful in recruiting when we can't get boys to stay in school because they're answering those questions for boys. So like you said, we have to recognize that these are realities in the way that boys are wired. And instead of trying to get them to think different, we have to create an environment where they can succeed. And most of our schools and most of our our churches and a lot of our public facilities are, are designed for girls. Everybody sits there and one person talks. Well, that boy wants to be engaged. He doesn't want the one person to talk. He wants to be the one who's talking. He, he's got something to say. And so we have to open ourselves up to say, okay, boys are different than girls. They're going to learn different. So let's stop fighting that and let's start catering to them and, and creating again another generation of men like we've seen in the greatest generation, men who understood that you fight for, for things and it's worth fighting for things. So number one is that boys and girls really are different. Number mm-hmm. two is that risk and competition really matter. Huge for boys. And number three? Third thing is, is physical movement. You know, science has shown us that that movement activates all the brain cells. John Rady, associate professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School, has proven this, that that, that movement act wakes up the brain cells for boys. So you see a boy in a classroom, and he intuitively knows, I've got to move if I'm going to stay engaged with this teacher. You want my brain? I've got to fidget. you got to let me fidget. Well, of course, as a teacher, as somebody in the room who's trying to establish order, you've got a moving boy. Sit still. Be quiet. Pay attention. You're shutting his brain down, and so he's looking. He's now disengaged because he can't be at, at his full at his full potential. We're taking that 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 movement away from him. So we have to recognize that boys need that. We're taking recess away. We're limiting recess. Yesterday, I was in a hotel lobby, and there was a uh, family at the next table with two boys, eight and ten years old, approximately. And I had let boys be boys book with me. So I walked over and I and I set it down on the table. I said. You know, mom and dad, this this is for you. You've got two boys. I think they were getting ready to go to Disneyland. They're all dressed up, and the boys were just all over the place. I mean, they are they're ready to go. And uh, the father got up and took the sons somewhere, and the mother uh, continued to sit there at the table. And I saw she picked up the book. She started leafing through that, and she came over and she sat down at my table. She said, "I got to tell you this." She said, "My son," she said, I, "I've got to give this book to my son's teacher <laughs> because she won't let him move, and for his punishment." They took recess away from him. And she says, I know that that makes it even harder for him. And so we're we're, we're making it more difficult by taking away the things that they need in order in order to learn and it's 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 tragic and it's creating this generation of boys they are behind girls in every single academic category every single one of them and in the 1960s i believe it was 60 percent of college students were boys 40 percent were girls that's completely flipped now there are more girls graduating with bachelor's degrees more girls graduating with master's degrees more girls graduating with, with doctoral degrees than boys and it Every single measurable category, girls are leading, leading boys academically because we've designed schools. 
tools for them. Well, Mark, to bring us back full circle, that's what y'all are trying to do at Trail Life, right? I mean, you guys are trying to create an environment where boys can be boys and they can develop uh, intellectually, spiritually, and emotionally into yeah. men. Yeah, every single one of those strategies, we, we, we endeavor to work in our Trail Life troop meetings. If you walk in a Trail Life troop meeting, hopefully it doesn't look like a Sunday school or classroom. We encourage the leaders, get the chairs out of the room. Stack them all up against the wall. Throw a bunch of Legos or something on the ground while you're working, while you're teaching the boys. Let them work with their hands. Let them stay physically involved with something. And they're listening to you. They may not look like they're listening to you, but they, they catch things by osmosis. They don't catch things by focus. So you've got to give them a, an environment that looks different than the environment they're already failing in in other places. You know, Ward, one of the saddest quotes that I read is right after the Boy Scouts admitted girls, I saw a quote in a newspaper article when they interviewed a, a scoutmaster, and he said, we love having girls in our troop. They're so much smarter and better behaved. Mm. And I thought, those poor boys, you know, uh, they're in school all day and that's what they hear. Why can't you sit still like Sally? And now they're going to their Boy Scout meeting and being told, and, you know, they're being told the same thing. There. Why, can't, why can't you sit still? Look at the girls. Look how well behaved the girls are being. Well, the boys are learning over and again. I don't fit here. I, I, there's something wrong with me, and it's tragic what, it, what it's causing in boys today. Well, Mark, I pray the Lord continues to bless your ministry and uh, Trail Life USA. Thank you so much for um, being on the program and for letting me help tell the story. That's Thank you, Warren. appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the Breakpoint Podcast. To learn more about Trail Life USA and to get your free ebook download of Mark Hancock's booklet, Let Boys Be Boys, visit traillifeusa.com. Or you can always come to breakpoint.org, click on this podcast, and we'll link you right to it. For the Colson Center, I'm Steve Ryder. Do good. Be awesome.